Welcome back to the Getabury channel. So recently we had an amazing trip to Harvey's Brewery and one of the unique things about them, and there's lots of unique things, you want to check out that brewery tour video. It was an incredible experience. But one thing that was very unique is that they do open top fermentation. Now this is totally new to me. I don't profess to be an expert in open top fermentation, but I was intrigued and equally fascinated about the process. So they basically have their own stamp, their own DNA, fingerprint, whatever you want to call it, on every beer style because the beers they make is using the Harvey's yeast. And when you walk into their fermentation room, the aroma that hits you is just amazing. So the, the vessels obviously are set up quite uniquely in that the wort is pumped in, the fresh yeast is added and fermentation begins and that open top fermentation is protected by the high crowding of the yeast. So whilst we would have stainless steel fermenters here in our brewery, which are cylindrical, conical and everything's fermented under pressure and, and enclosed, this was open to the elements but in a way that the yeast protected it. So whilst the fermenters were open topped, there was a thick layer of yeast on top of the wort which was protecting the wort. So, if you're going to do open top fermentation, you need to pay attention to a couple of things. And what I learned while I was there is making sure that everything's really, really clean. Cleanliness is pivotal. Um, making sure you're using the finest good quality ingredients. And then obviously the, the yeast that Harvey's used is totally unique to them. And the temperature at which that's fermented at. So there's a few little tips we picked up. But one thing I wanted to mention is like Miles is one of the nicest gentleman I've ever met. He gave me all of his time for a full day, a full tour of his Victorian brew house. And I, I mean a genuine gentleman. When you arrive, he, he came to greet me in a three-piece suit, you know, that traditional, just um, nice mannerisms, very polite, very accommodating. And I would be privileged to say that he had give us the day within his brew house. So open top fermentation, something that we want to take you through now. We've used some of the footage um, from Miles and uh, doing a talk on open top fermentation and we've used some of the footage that we've used. I think you're going to find this a really interesting YouTube video, a little bit different to what we normally do. So um, come and learn a little bit more about open top fermentation. From my point of view, as soon as you walk in, you get a beautiful aroma. It's clearly the active fermenting yeast uh, smell in the air. So, tell us a little bit about the history of Harvey's yeast. Where did it originate Harvey's from? Harvey's yeast. Uh, well, we we originally uh, acquired it in 1957 from John Smith's brewery in Tadcaster, and they sent it down by passenger train from York to Lewis, and it arrived midday the following morning. Was pitched into the brew. And we were given strict instructions that it needed to be roused at a certain point. It was very flocculent, so Yorkshire yeast, which we duly did. And it, it, it worked. We, we we'd had to look for a yeast because the yeast that we had been using had been uh, lost. It was um, actually supplied by a company called the British Pure Yeast Company. And they used um, various Burton brewers um, to supply local brewers who didn't have their own strain with uh, an easily replenished supply of, supply of yeast um, each month and when they shut um, that supply dried up we couldn't track it so had to find another yeast and John Smith's was one that other brewers have had great success with. Uh, over the years it's mutated in Lewis I mean you, you Got, got over 60 years of pitching from one brew to the next and what was originally a single strain yeast is now two strains exactly the same DNA but slightly different um, characteristics to them so we, we jealously guard it and uh, monitor its progress over the years but uh, so far so good. But this yeast we've been using since 1957 it comes off one brew and it goes into the next because yeast reproduces itself four or five fold during fermentation. So you always get more out than you put in. Hello, my dears, how are we? The fermenting room. The worts flow from the coolers 
down to our fermenting vessels where we pitch in our yeast and fermentation commences. And you can see that they are traditional open fermenters. You can see on the sides of the vessel where the yeast grew up during fermentation. Well, that's been skimmed off and put into cold store for the next week's brewing. What's happening now is the formation of the finishing head, which will protect the finished product from airborne bacteria during the cooling process. See the, the crowsing you can see around the top of this, this vessel here, for example? Is, so that, that's where it goes up to? And yeah. it's skimmed on a parachute system. When you see the, um, the, the funnel-like structure in the vessel there, you lower that down to the level of your fermenting wort and the yeast head above just goes down the funnel into wagons below wow. and then you put it into cold store. And do you manage it by turning you this way? Turn it round, yeah. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Our yeast is skimmed into these wagons and then transferred to our cold store and kept for the following week's brewing. We first acquired the yeast in 1957, so we've been storing it from week to week for over 60 years. Now, everyone talks about a fingerprint on Harvey's beer, something that is very immediately discernible within the character of that beer. And that is very largely down to the yeast. The yeast has never been cultured. We've simply pitched it into one brew, skimmed it off, and put it into the next brew the following week. We estimate that over 3,000 generations of yeast have passed through our tun room in that time. Does it need a lot of nutrition when it's being handled in that way? No, I mean, the, the nutrition should be in, in, in the wort itself. Yeah. You can use a proprietary yeast food that will give you yeah. trace elements that might be lacking in certain harvests and cause problems, but yeah. you're, you're open to atmosphere, so you have a, a risk of um, uh, wild yeast and other things, uh, obviously, uh, in the atmosphere. But the important thing is that you have a, a wort that you know is sterile and you're giving the yeast the nutrient that it wants so you get an active fermentation, so it will compete very effectively with anything else that's around. And uh, obviously we're pretty strict on analysis and we do check things out uh, every week on the brews. And uh, the, the, the yeast head that you're left with there, which is traditionally known as a macaroni head, you can see why, um, we, it, it forms a crust over the top of the finished product and it protects it from airborne infection. Uh, micro microorganisms, wild yeast, whatever, and uh, that, that is a seal on the, on the vessel while we're cooling. Always say if yeast doesn't get what it likes, it sucks, and it's, yeah. it's pretty true. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> is there a time limit that the you know maybe flocculation would totally drop out? Or uh, no, I mean we we cool. Um, you're going to get a certain amount of yeast dropping out. Um, during that cooling process, and I think the, the harder you go in with cooling, the better. Uh, but um, no, no uh, you know, we, we monitor our yeast counts from week to week, and they're pretty consistent. Yeah. And obviously, that is aligned to the fining action in the cask. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same yeast strain you use for all beer stacks? Same, same yeast for all beers, because with open fermenters, much though I'd love to experiment with another yeast and, and do uh, uh, something different, um, we would run the risk of infecting our own strain yeah. uh, with another strain which you know we've guarded jealously for many decades. So yeah, no, I wouldn't want to do so if I can possibly avoid it. Why open top? Well, it's very traditional, yeah. and I do believe firmly that if we were to move to conical fermenters, which we could do, uh, the character of the beer would change to some degree. And when you've got a beer that is 85% of your production and people rely on it being authentic and uh, as it has been brewed for a number of uh, decades, if not centuries, then it seems very silly to change anything that might impair that uh, popularity of the brand. Here we are in the cold room where we have our yeast stored from this morning's brew. And this is destined for next week's brew. So the, when, when Miles opens the door, the aroma again is phenomenal. I mean, beautiful. So this is a week and a bit's worth of fresh yeast. So go in and check this out.
So look, you'll have seen for yourself there, that's an incredible experience. I can tell you from a personal point of view, when you're in the open top fermentation room or when you're in the fridge where they store the, the fresh yeast for the next week, the aroma is amazing. I mean, it really is beautiful. So a few things that we noticed was the, the nice little hand wheel turn, the, um, obviously the, the little upside down china hat. Um, that captures the yeast, that allows it to, you know, to fall through into the collection vessels below and then they're subsequently stored in the fridge. That whole process was really, really fascinating and the sensory behind it was incredible. Now, it was interesting to hear Miles tell us about uh, the few incidents when there's been like floods or serious weather in incidents where his first thought is, how do I protect the yeast? <laughs> You know, how do I get the yeast out? Has he to bring the yeast out, put it in the refrigerated van and drive it to the, the nearest hill to make sure that the, the brewery doesn't flood again? He has had to encounter those things. So uh, open top fermentation, amazing Harvey's Brewery Tour. I mean, one of the best brewery tours we've ever done. And if you get the opportunity to try that beer, uh, we highly recommend it. It really is impressive. So if you enjoyed that little snippet on open top fermentation, you will really enjoy the full video that we did doing a tour of the beautiful Victorian brew house at Harvey's. Check it out in the link that follows. Until next time, happy brewing.